Hey guys, it's Tia, welcome to the video. So I got some questions about creating fonts in my last video. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going through the entire font creation and export process, as well as what to expect if you wanna sell your font on a digital marketplace like Etsy, Creative Market, Graphic River and various other marketplaces. Now fonts are great for all sorts of creative projects and I think they're pretty fun to make. So overall a great skill. Like the video if you find it helpful, subscribe and turn on the notifications bell to get notified when I post new videos and let's get started. So in this video, we'll be using Adobe Illustrator on desktop and the Font Self Maker extension. I have all the Adobe apps on Creative Cloud with the student discount, which is a pretty big one actually. So if you're a student or teacher, then that is something to look into. I've got a 50% student discount on Font Self for Photoshop and Illustrator. I just had to take a photo of my student ID and submit it to them. It took a few hours to get approved. I'll also be using my iPad and the Apple Pencil, although there are other ways to create artwork that I will cover in this video. So if you don't want to pay, then I'll be making a video on how to make fonts for free. So make sure to subscribe and look out for that. After you've installed Illustrator and Font Self, you want to open Illustrator and create a new file, then open up Font Self. You can do this by searching for the Font Self Maker extension in the search bar on the top right. So once you open it, you'll see a window that looks like this. There's two help files it comes with, which you should open if it hasn't done that for you already. So click the three lines to see the files it comes with. The first one to open up with is this introduction sheet with information to get you started. It also tells you how to make colored fonts and set your own guidelines. So you should have a read through that if that's something you wanna do. The second file is the beginner template with pre-made guidelines and symbols on it. Now I don't normally use this template because everything's too far apart and you can't really visualize how the letters look next to each other. So the font will probably look weird. I set my own guidelines and I draw on top of those, but I'll use this for the sake of clarity in this video when it comes to explaining how to group the letters later. There's a lot of different ways you can create artwork for your font. You can just straight up use your mouse to draw. You can build the letters using shapes. You can draw the letters on paper and then scan that in or take a photo and then vectorize the shapes one by one, which would probably take ages. You can also use a graphics tablet to draw them directly in your desktop, probably the easiest way. The way I prefer to do it is opening Illustrator on my iPad and drawing the letters with my Apple Pencil because I can actually see what I draw in front of me. So I feel like that has better control. So I'll save this template to my creative cloud, which syncs my Adobe files on all devices. And then I'll open up Illustrator on my iPad and find that file. So I select the paintbrush and change the settings to something that looks suitable for the style of font that I'm trying to make. If you want ideas for what kind of font sell, you can look on marketplaces for bestsellers and on Google images as well and create a font in a style that you like. Alternatively, you can just make one from your own natural handwriting or uh, one with a lot of fancy colors and artwork. You can be as creative as you want. If you really want to get fancy, it's probably better to use the Photoshop version of the Font Self extension. It gives you more freedom because the stuff isn't vectorized. Today, I'll be creating a simple calligraphy font. These kind of Elegant handwriting styles are uh, more popular on Etsy, whereas customers on other marketplaces like Graphic River, for example, seem to prefer more blocky design style fonts or artistic fonts. For handwritten fonts, if I'm changing the style, I like to practice a few times on paper, just looking at images of those types of fonts to sort of get the gist before I start drawing on the iPad. So I actually screen recorded me drawing the letters, but the file corrupted and it froze when I used the Apple Pencil, which is basically the entire video. So I have to skip that bit, but it's pretty straightforward. You just draw the letters and as many symbols as you want. If you want to sell your font though, be aware that some websites like Graphic River have a minimum characters requirement. So usually all the small and the capital letters the 10 numbers and a couple of symbols. So check you've made drawings for all of these. So once I'm done with that, I'll open the file in desktop Illustrator again. And the artwork I did on iPad should be synced because of the Adobe Cloud. 
Now what we need to do is make sure all the shapes are grouped. So at the moment, every letter is made of separate paths, which you can see on the right in the layers panel. And we need to make it so that this A, for example, which is currently made of three objects, becomes a group. You can do this by selecting all the paths for that character and then pressing Control or Command G on your keyboard or right clicking and then click group. One way to check if the characters have been grouped properly is to click on one path and if that ends up selecting the entire character, then you're good. So I'm just gonna group the rest of the characters now. A final way to check things are grouped properly is scrolling through the paths of your artwork layer, going A, B, C, D, E, F, G and checking. And if there's any suspicious dots or lines that don't belong to a character, then you should delete those. When I'm drawing on the iPad, I sometimes make a really small dot by accident and then it takes ages to find it. So this bit can be annoying, but you'll see why it's important later. Now everything's grouped properly, we can start the font creation process. So open up the font self extension and now highlight everything that's a small letter, drag it into the extension window onto the part that says lowercase letters. The extension automatically detects how many objects you have selected and it will show that number in the brackets, 26 for letters and 10 for numbers obviously. If you have the wrong number of objects like 27 for example, then either something has not been grouped properly or there's just a random dot somewhere, you have to look for that and get rid of it I'm afraid. So if you have the correct number, it will create the font for you. So now I'll do the same thing with the capital letters and numbers. With symbols, you drag them in and rename them as the symbol you want to export as like this. Now it's time to adjust the kerning or the space between the letters and the vertical positioning of the letters. Now, because this is a calligraphy font, I want the letters to seem like they're joined together like they would be if they were handwritten. So the space after most letters will have to be reduced. If it was a more blocky font, we'd want the space before and after the letters to be more even. I do this in alphabetical order. So to start off with, I type the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, which if you didn't know is a pangram, which means it contains every letter of the alphabet. And then I look for where A is. I look at how that looks and I adjust until I'm happy with it. If I want to see how a letter looks next to another letter, then I just type that in the text box. So if you don't like the look of any letters, you can go back and readjust them using the direct selection tool because they're all vectors. Um, now, because I use this template to make the font, the joining is kind of off the uh, linking crosses where it's not really supposed to, but in the interest of time, I'm just gonna leave it like this and export. So when you export your font, there's four main file types people tend to export as, which are OTF or open type, uh, TTF or true type, SVG and PNG. So OTF and TTF you can install on your computer and font self automatically exports as OTF. TTF is just an older version of the open type. So you can convert OTF to TTF using font squirrel for free. I do this anyway, but if a site only asked to upload one version, I'd pick the OTF file. Some people use fonts for crafts, embroidering or cricket. So they want a separate image or vector files of your fonts. Illustrator lets you export objects as SVGs and PNGs really easily using the asset export panel. So you can highlight all the objects and drag them into the panel. They all end up in a zip file, which you can just upload. You might see people exporting as DXF for 3D design and stuff like that, but I've never bothered with that to be honest. So I take the OTF, TTF and the zip file with the PNGs and the other zip file with the SVGs and then I zip it all into one big file and upload that for sale. So that's how I create and sell fonts. Drop a like if you found that helpful and subscribe for more. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video, which will most likely be about three ways to make and sell fonts.